Ladies and gentlemen, give a huge round of applause to our panelist and key speaker, Ms. Dr. Rizwan. Thank you. Do you have presentations? Jay, please. Assalamu alaikum and uh, good evening, I guess. Okay, we've, so uh, let me start because I believe I have, what, about 10 to 15 minutes? Or can I go on forever? So uh, we've been hearing about how we need to do this and how we need to do that to improve the innovation ecosystem or the startup ecosystem or whatever. So I want to take a different approach. And I want to talk about those islands of excellence that exist in any part of the world and their role in uh, what happens. And I'm going to draw only on my own experience. So I'm not going to talk third party or second party uh, things. So I'm going to talk about those places which defy the odds, which do things that you don't normally expect uh, from those areas. So before I start, there are, I believe we have friends from other countries, and I want our own people to know a few things which are positive about the country. So Pakistan at a glance, relatively large country, a large population, most of it young, which means a lot of potential. There's a startup boom happening because of this. Uh, currently, we are fourth or third largest in freelancing. It keeps flipping between third and fourth, which is the documented part. There's a lot of undocumented part there. The seventh largest pool of scientists and engineers in the world. Lots of potential in this country. And a lot of good things are happening, which we unfortunately don't find out about. Forbes recently said, we are one of the coolest places to visit in the world. So all those from outside Pakistan, you have to visit Pakistan more. You have to see this place. OK. How do you experience excellence? Where do you experience excellence? You start from day one. Do you still remember that one teacher that taught you something that you still remember? Do you still remember that one teacher that you fondly remember? That was one teacher. That's excellence. Excellence is not something which will grow on its own. It needs nurturing. Excellence is feared. Wherever you have excellence, there will be people who will try to bring it down because they are not excellent. However, my own experience of excellence has been that it is everywhere. You can find excellence in somebody who's selling fruit or the best scientist in the world. You will find it in people. You will find it in organization. So because of uh, time, I, mean, I have uh, some stories to tell. I will talk about only three. Here's an example. Smart prosthetics made at at least one-fifth of the cost of what's available, made in Pakistan, totally designed and engineered in Pakistan. It is smart. It has sensors. This guy is a double amputee and he can put it on, lift a heavy object, all, all done locally, all local material, all local design, which means it is personalizable, it is customizable. Many of you would remember around 2014, there was a terrorist attack on one of the Air Force bases, and our radar aircraft, uh, the resolution is horrible, um, our radar aircraft got damaged, Saab, which is the manufacturer of the aircraft, said, throw them away. They cannot be fixed. A team of young engineers, all undergraduate graduates, seven or eight of them, got together, led by only two PhDs. These aircraft are flying and were involved in the operation in which we brought down Abhinandan. All done locally. The Swedish Coat, the Swedish cost for recovering of this aircraft, which meant buying new aircraft and re replacing equipment, was $300 million. This was done in 15, all done in Pakistan. Student, <clears throat> we have student Formula car teams in Pakistan who are taking part in the international competitions and always finishing around the fifth, fourth, third, second places competitions in the UK, in the Russia, in USA. So there are very recent results. Second prize in the competition in Russia. 
second prize during COVID when they had the virtual design competition in the UK. And very recently, Tesla has joined as an innovation partner for the student formula team. How many of you knew that? Yeah, that's a center of excellence. All of this is happening at NUST, the National University of Sciences and Technology, where I'm privileged to be the prorector. So I'm going to tell you about this center of excellence. So while there are three different stories, there's one center of excellence. NAST is ranked 334th in the world, 41st in the world in young universities, universities under the age of 50. It has also risen 200 places in the last six years. NAST is currently a case study for QS ranking system of how a developing world country, uh, developing world university can rise so rapidly. In the Times Higher Education Impact Rankings, which measures your impact on society on what you are doing to the community around you, we are ranked in the top 200 universities of the world. Much more importantly, in some of the sustainable development goals, we are ranked in the top 100, and in one, we are ranked number four in the world. You have beaten MIT, you have beaten Stanford, you've beaten Cambridge, and you're number four in the world youngsters just like you. Recently, NAST held the first of its kind IP summit with the World IP Office in Geneva. DG Vipo was our keynote speaker. It took us six months to convince them to become our partners because there was this image problem. People thought, Pakistan? How is intellectual property protected in Pakistan? It took us six months to convince them. They joined this conference. They studied our system, audited it, and then chose NAST to represent all of South Asia in their annual brainstorming session in Geneva. That's what you can be proud of. <laughs> NAST has the first and only, unfortunately, still the only science and technology park of the country. 104 companies are sitting inside the campus at NAST. This is the first place where you have this ecosystem available. So what have we done? As a university, all we have done is, here's a nice looking building. We have put in the ecosystem. What we have done is we've put in the environment where the youngsters can create startups, mingle with large companies and sit there. And right now, it says 10 multinationals from nine countries. It's slightly outdated. It's 11 multinationals from 10 countries now sitting inside that park, mentoring those startups who are sitting there. We asked the government, the same government that we keep hearing about, previous, this one, whatever, we asked the government, we need a special economic zone status to be able to attract uh, industry. Last year they granted us, 2020, they granted us the special economic zone status. So we are the only university in the country which has a special economic zone status. If you open your company in NUST, you get 10 years of tax break, right? So something very, very special. What, has, what that resulted in is, there are now companies as large as Turkish Aerospace Industries, Dream Big Semiconductor of San Francisco, Arshalik, again of Turkey, one of the largest appliance manufacturers of Europe, Tufal Chemicals, one of the largest exporters of chemicals from Pakistan, Pakistan microbiologists, uh, Wali Industries, and actually there are now 11 names there. These guys have opened their design labs in NAST. The first time to happen in Pakistan. Which means the youngsters get the opportunity to go do work for these guys, do projects for these guys, and end up doing their formula cars and end up doing those pros prosthetic projects and et cetera. And this has been recognized internationally. Our startups are now in global news. Peter Thiel, who was the co-founder of PayPal, recently invested in Pricesoy, a very famous startup amongst young people, I believe. Uh, Adam Draper uh, recently invested half a million dollars in Orbit, uh, Orbit Tech, which is a education uh, tech uh, startup led by girls. And there are many other examples. One very, very interesting fact is 60% of the kids who come into NAST are coming from low middle income to low income households. So that's where the talent is. Give them the ecosystem and they can turn a university in a global leader.
give them the ecosystem, and they turn it into an island of excellence. So islands of excellence can happen anywhere. Islands of excellence can happen in the worst of conditions if you just do two or three things right. Focus on quality, focus on merit, make sure nothing happens without a cause or a reason. I just wanted to show you a couple of pictures of the campus to give you that idea of what we are talking about. This is Islamabad campus of NAST. That's the sports complex in the front. The students who come to NAST and the startups who come to NAST and the, in that ecosystem get facilities which are the best sports facilities in the country. Here's just a list. How did we do this? By we, I mean people who were before me because this is a 30-year-old university. All they did was believe that you can create a center of excellence anywhere. This campus is built on the land which was the landfill of Islamabad. Let that sink in. This was the garbage dump of Islamabad, which has become that campus. It is one of the greenest campuses currently in the country. They didn't take money. It took as much money as any other organization requires to run. It just needed a focus that you can do excellent work anywhere. It took that focus from the students, it took that focus from the faculty members, and it took that focus from the administration. And this excellence was created in Islamabad, in Pakistan, and today, as a Pakistani, I am proud that I am called, I mean the university is called by the government of Brazil to come and stand in front of their 50 top federal universities and explain to them how NUST has been able to do what it has done. We are invited by Cranfield in UK to come and please sign an agreement with us because we want to start an undergraduate program and we want to learn from your experience. Cranfield of UK. We are called into Silicon Valley as a specialist ecosystem and come and explain how the developing world university can do this. Centers of excellence. Please believe in yourself. My keynote is all about this. You are the most capable people in the world. I have seen the world. I have had the, alhamdulillah, opportunity to visit at least 20 plus uh, countries. Best, worst, you guys are the smartest of them all. I have not gone to a single place in the world where I've felt these guys are better than us. Not a single place. You can do NUST, you can do LUMS, you can do IBA, and so many other good things that are happening in the country just with a little bit of focus. You don't need billions of dollars. You do not need infrastructure. You do not need anything but your own commitment to do something excellent. If you have that commitment, trust me, you have the capability. These kids who are opening these startups and getting investment from outside, just like us, just like you. So please believe in yourself. Remember that you can be that center of excellence. You can be the island of excellence and defy all the odds that have been pit against you. Do not be discouraged. Stop looking at the news. First thing, stop looking at the news. Do not be discouraged by what is going around you because you are the only one who will stop yourself. Thank you very much.